It started back in 94 on the east coast of the state. Ultraviolet Philadelphia, Gorilla had their own thing in LA. A big no hollow vacancy, full of hot air, breath of fresh air from this industry. You've heard of the puns, the dragons, the heroes, they all get through the sea. Hello, world, and all who inhabit it, welcome to episode two of Hooligans Unite. My name is Ruby, and you guys, I gotta say, I was overwhelmed by the positive feedback that was received from the launching of the channel last week to our sit-down interview with Sonia Deville. Um, it was really cool to see just how many people that she inspires on a daily basis firsthand. So if you haven't checked out that interview, I highly recommend that you do so. Um, also, don't forget, the Hooligans Help the Trevor Project fundraiser is still in effect. It will be in effect for another three weeks. You have three more weeks to donate. Last time I checked, we had managed to raise over $1,000 in one week. But we are still shy of our $5,000 goal, so please check out the link below and donate. For every $20 that you donate, you enter for a chance to win an exclusive Hooligans Unite t-shirt, as well as an 8x10 signed by yours truly and a personalized message, or a personalized message and a one-of-a-kind Ruby Riot painting in honor of Pride Month. If you donate $100 or more and you win the Pay Your Dues raffle, you will be getting both of those prize combinations what could be better. The painting will be unveiled next week um, on episode three, so be sure and check it out. Um, I'm just putting the finishing touches on it, you guys. I want it to be perfect. I want it to be something that you guys are proud to hang on your walls. And speaking of Pride Month, uh, my friends are doing some pretty cool things as well. Sonia Deville, who we had on last week, is the co-founder of Demandy's Donuts. And Demandy's Donuts is doing $5 to the Trevor Project for every Pride item sold and $5 to Black Lives Matter for every non-Pride item sold. The link will be down below. And also, my friends, the Nemeth Brothers, have put together this awesome Heel Pride t-shirt um, where all the proceeds go to the CBE. Now, the CBE is the national leader in connecting the members of the black LGBTQ community um, with education and resources to engage and empower. So if you want to help out that cause in any way, um, that link for the t-shirt will be down below, as well if you want to donate directly. Also, next week, myself in collaboration with the fine folks at Punk Rock Saves Lives, we are going to be announcing the nonprofit that we are gonna be working with for the month of July. Now, because we got a little bit of a late start, we're gonna be running two fundraisers at the same time for a couple weeks, but both nonprofits deserve all of our love and attention, so please click on both links um, and donate for an entry to win some really cool goodies. That brings me to what I have referred to as Ruby's Dessert Disaster. Now you guys, I have never been a very good baker, but I definitely attempted to make a rainbow cake from scratch. Now I promise you there was a lot of love that went into this cake, but unfortunately there was a lot of other substitutions for some ingredients that I didn't have, which made this cake turn out a little questionable. So uh, check it out and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Today we're gonna be making a rainbow cake. And historically I am not the best at baking. What the hell? Oh my God. What are you doing? You freak. Y'all done? Relax. <laughs> oh my lanta, don't you talk to me like that. Go, go do something away from me. So this is gonna be difficult because it is from scratch. I don't think I've ever made anything from scratch. So let's get going. First, we heat the oven to 335. That seems weirdly specific. 
preheating is what it says. It says that. Prepare six eight by two cake pans with cake goop. Cake goop? And place in a round piece of parchment paper in the bottom of the pan. Do I have parchment paper? I think I got a lot of things, but I feel like this is not one of them. We have foil. Foil will work, right? Because I've always done like the close enough method. Um, like if I don't have something and something seems like it would work, that's what I'll use. Like the other day, I made sweet potatoes and the recipe called for brown sugar and I just used <laughs> regular sugar. Um, it did not taste as good, so I don't recommend that at all. I hope foil is going to do the trick. I don't, I don't know. My nails keep cutting it. They're rainbow, by the way. Pride Month. Rainbow cake. Rainbow nails. Ripped tin foil. I'm bad at this. I can't get a hold of them. Alright, so I've done that to all of these pans. Oh god. Then it says combine eight ounces of buttermilk and oil. Did I get <gasps> I didn't get buttermilk. Oh no. How to make buttermilk. So it says that, you can't see that. Okay, it says that sour cream and water or milk is a good substitute for buttermilk. So I'm gonna give this a shot um, because I don't wanna leave my house. There was a bunch of other things of like, lemon juice and milk or vinegar and milk and I have neither of those. I do have a big old packet of sour cream. So, I hope this doesn't screw it up. Combine three fourths cup of sour cream with one fourth cup of water or milk and whisk it. So that's what we're gonna do. I mean it still smells like sour cream, so. Six ounces of vegetable oil. And then set it to the side. Combine remaining buttermilk, which means 10 ounces of buttermilk. <laughs> this whole buttermilk thing has just ruined my whole life. Oh, that's gross. Ah, God. Oh, a mess. I don't have a lot of bowls, so I have to use like a cereal bowl. But it's also getting everywhere. Every time I ever heard the sound, I hear my mom was making French toast. All right, this cake is gonna end up tasting like sour cream, I swear. The buttermilk substitute of sour cream. 10 ounces of egg whites, room temperature, okay? And then <clears throat> the vanilla. Okay, let's just combine all of these things. Set aside again. I'll combine flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, salt in a bowl of a stand mixer with paddle attachment. Okay, here I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Um, I don't own a stand mixer, and stand mixers are like $400, and I don't make enough to make that a thing. So I have these. This this mixer thing is what we're gonna do. Good lord. We have a bigger bowl. I don't have that many bowls. I'm gonna run out of bowls. Because the stand mixer said paddle for at least 10 seconds, this looks like a paddle to me. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm assuming and set aside. Add your softened butter to the dry ingredients and mix on low until mixture resembles coarse sand. This is the craziest recipe I've ever experienced in my life. Okay, not that bad. in your milk slash 
oil mixture and let mix until dry ingredients are moistened and then bump up to medium setting and let mix for two full minutes to develop cakes structure. I feel like this is important and I feel like I messed this up already. I should have just bought cake mix. I feel like I bit off a little bit more than I can chew, but this is the buttermilk substitute and oil combination that we're gonna put right in there. There's not a medium or a, um, there's just one, two, three, four, and five. So we're gonna do a low setting. Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't think I'm supposed to try this. I wanna try it, but I'm scared. So I'll just make it a surprise. Scrape your bowl, then reduce speed to low. Add in your egg white slash milk mixture in three batches. What? Okay. What? Letting the batter mix for 15 seconds between additions. Okay. And then we will do one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Mix it in. everywhere. I think I have cake mix in my hair. So that's cool. Next, we divide your batter into six bowls. You know what I thought of? I Okay, so I watch a lot of cake wars because it's fascinating to me and I like seeing what they do with food. How do they do this in like tiers and tiers of cakes in like an hour max, 40 minutes? Like how do you, got, how do they do that? Okay, color each of your, food, your bowls with food colors. to think about the fact that like this small little part right here on the recipe is just like casually like color six bowls worth of crap and then you know it won't take you that long it took me 40 minutes to do this I got my terrible okay it says bake your layers for 20 to 24 min minutes or until the edges just start pulling away from the pan do not under bake or the middle of the cake will collapse Oh my god. god. Cake boss, how do you do this? Get out of here with yourself. This is so stressful. Got it, okay, so we're doing this. We're doing this right now. We're putting them in the oven. I feel like this is gonna come out like crap, but let's hope not. Next is the buttercream frosting. Thank god that it doesn't take buttermilk because I'm fresh out of sour cream. There's like gold drip in this too, which I think is like melted regular chocolate and other crap. And I don't, well, I'm not doing all that. So if you wanna know how to do it, it's in the recipe in the link, but I'm not doing it. Powdered sugar and pasteurized, pasteurized egg whites from a pasture. Eight ounces, so essentially one cup. 32 ounces of powdered sugar. That's a lot. Ah! Don't eat that. 32 ounces of unsalted butter. Are you serious right now? It says slowly add all the butter. I'm over it. I'm over it. So we're just, we're just, we're just doing it. We're gonna whip this as it takes. It sounds gross, but it looks cool. Okay, so two tablespoons. Hey! Enough! I'm gonna whoop your little butts. No, no. I love them. 
Yes, you. My little demon. It's the worst. Hey, don't talk to me like that. It was too much salt. One dot that says a purple food coloring to make the frosting white. Okay. Ooh. Apparently my drop was too big, because now it's just bullish grayish food color, color frosting, which is fine. I'm not super picky about the color, um, especially considering I don't know if my cakes are going to be edible. Can't really tell the difference between the blue and the green. They look incredibly spongy, which I don't think they're supposed to. And some of them are brown-ish, like the purple is. That's brutal. Good grief. So I'm gonna let them cool. Um, it's time for the big reveal of how these cakes are gonna look out of the pan. So we're gonna start with red. Um, good. It does, this does not look good. <laughs> it's like pizza. What in the hell? Gosh, I can't even get it off the non-stick foil my ass. So, uh, round one is a complete and total disaster. Round two, not bad. Doesn't look good on the top, but you know, we're, we're there. We're gonna put our frosting. Next is yellow. Substituting aluminum foil for parchment paper 
If you get a chance to make this cake the correct way, please send me a picture and tag me in on Instagram or Twitter. Um, happy Pride Month, you guys. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, God. It's, so, it's like imploding. It's terrible. Let's take this